All right, thank you for joining us. My name is Doug Ude, and uh, on behalf of Cumulus Networks, I'd like to welcome you to the vSphere Modernization with Open Networking webinar. Um, today, Ahmed Dasuki will be um, presenting. Um, you know, his speaker bio is on the, on the webinar page, so you can feel free to have a look at that. Uh, the webinar will be about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, we'll have a short demo near the end to kind of tie things all together. And you can ask questions during, during the, the time uh, in the participant window. Uh, if you want, want to ask questions, you just use the participant window on the left, um, mark it as a question, and we'll, we'll answer you as best as we can. Um, if we don't get to all the questions, we'll try to answer them uh, after the fact as well. Uh, our Twitter handle is at Cumulus Networks, so you can ask questions on there, and we'll be kind of monitoring that through the session as well. Um, and with that, I'll get out of the way and turn it over to you. So over to you, Ahmed. Thank you, Doug, for the introduction. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. This will be, uh, as Doug mentioned, a 45-minute session to go over the combined solution between vSphere, open networking, uh, using Cumulus Networks. Um, however, it's not necessarily a deep dive into each subject individually. Um, after the presentation towards the end, there will be a demo and a Q&A uh, &A session. Um, as Doug mentioned, uh, as a reminder, please ask any questions uh, via our chat box. Um, here's the agenda of what we're going to go over today, uh, vSphere, open networking, uh, Cumulus, ONI, uh, zero-touch provisioning known, um, as ZTP, and automation followed by a demo. So let's start with uh, what is a uh, high level of what vSphere is. Since you already know, most of you already, uh, uh, I'm sorry, most of you already know what vSphere, uh, but in a quick uh, two-liners, VMware vSphere is a cloud computing operating system for virtualization, and it, it, is, it is the name given to the bundle of all features in the new, um, a new, new version, um, ESXi, vCenter, and its features, and so on. Um, for example, like uh, VM, VMware vSphere is like Microsoft Windows, where Microsoft is a company name, Windows is a product line name, um, in Windows family, you have OS such as Windows 7, uh, Windows uh, 2008. This is the same in vSphere. Um, VMware is the company name, vSphere is a product line, um, and ESX 5.5 is a hypervisor version. Here's a list regarding things, um, what vSphere does and its features from virtualization to computing and networking. If you'd like to go over any of these concepts and details, uh, please refer to VMware vSphere uh, website. They have awesome videos and documentation to go over each concept in great depth. Now, let's move on to open networking um, with Cumulus Linux. So here's a list of what open networking offers. It offers choice of hardware, choice of software, um, and by that means is um, you can choose any hardware uh, that you would like um, from specifically when you're talking about Cumulus from the um, uh, hardware compatibility list. Um, also, the, the choice of software, it doesn't necessarily have to be Cumulus Linux, but of course we're promoting um, uh, Cumulus Linux. But this is just different than your traditional uh, vendors where you're locked in with the hardware and software provided. Um, and the reason, one of the questions would be is like, okay, why automation or why open network, uh, why open platform? The answer would that be is CapEx and OpEx. We'd like to minimize the complexity how to use a vanilla vSphere without NSX. Most of the time, um, we don't care about the complex features or every little small feature, um, but we would like to keep one thing in mind. I know it works, and I know it works fast. Um, Cumulus Linux can give you features uh, like MLAC, VLAN scale, basic spanning tree. If you want to deploy an overlay solution like NSX, it will help reduce the complexity of the underlay network, um, but you don't have to. Cumulus is all about options. Some of the things to keep in mind is what are your pro what are your problems? Automation, not enough time. The network is slower to deploy uh, than uh, to deploy than VMs or hypervisors. Cumulus Linux is not Linux like. It is Linux. Um, it is one of the it is the industry leader in open networking, and it's bringing the Linux revolution to networking. So now, how do we tie both things together? Cumulus Linux and VMware vSphere are software solutions run on top of bare metal, industry standard hardware. This allows customers to build, compute, 
storage, and now network platforms from a wide variety of suppliers who often employ highly competitive pricing models. The software defines the performance and behavior of the environment and allows the administrator to exercise version control and programmatic approaches that are already in use by DevOps teams. If you look here at the diagram, uh, you can see that VMware and uh, VMware and, and, and Virtual SAN and the hypervisor um, is all taken care of, and then you, the underlay is provided by uh, uh, from the networking side from the switch by the hardware accelerated IPv4, IPv6 network routing and switching. Um, this switch is is no longer vital uh, is no longer um, taken care of by only one vendor, where we can give you many options regarding the freedom of of hardware, as we mentioned before. Let's go over an example for vSphere in a traditional layer two environment. So here's, here's an example of a class architecture where we have two spine switches, um, four uh, access leaf switches. Um, and the details, of course, of specific models may vary, but um, and the, the access leaf switches provide dual home connectivity to ESXi hosts and storage elements. Um, this is very simple. Um, of course, in larger deployments, this can um, uh, this will scale out, as we'll cover later. Here's an example of two bare metal switches for spine and leaves. For the spine, there's a 32 by 40 gig, and for the leaf, it's 48 by 10 uh, by 10 gig with up to six times 40 gig uplink. Um, in Cumulus Linux, switch ports are labeled SWP1, SWP2. P2, SWP3, and so forth. I personally used to get it confused with swap or SWIP, but it's actually switch port one, switch port two, et cetera. Um, the two things that we keep the same is uh, loopback and out of management, uh, uh, and out of band management are still called LO and ETH0. One of the common protocols used is CLAC for each pair of logical switches. From the downstream devices or hosts, both switches would appear as one. CLAC can also be called as MLAG or other vendors, which is, um, in, or in other vendors, which is essentially multi-chassis link aggregation uh, group. This could be another webinar on its own on how to set it up, so we'll just move on from this. For the sake of discussion in this topology, we assume the typical enterprise use case of vSphere deployments leveraging the vSphere distributed switch, VDS, to provide LCP bonds between the host and the leaf switches and to provide load balancing based on IP hashing. In a typical vSphere environment, VLANs are used to segment traffic by type, such as VMs, VM kernel, enabled for vSphere services such as vMotion traffic, fault to uh, tolerance logging, management traffic, virtual SAN traffic, or VM kernel for storage, iSCSI. To allow room for growth, several hundred VLANs are allocated, even though not all VLANs may be used initially. An important supplement to the high capacity production data network is the management network used to administer infrastructure elements such as network switches, physical servers, and storage systems. The architecture of these networks vary considerably based on their intended use, the elements themselves, and access isolation requirements. Any form of network-based storage impact uh, imparts specific considerations on the design and deployment. One of the most common forms of network storage used with vSphere is NFS. Most NFS installations leverage LCP bonds to connect both ESXi hosts and network-attached storage. Typical NFS deployments leverage a common set of configurations, jumbo frames, 9K IP, uh, 9K IP MTU, uh, 10 gig links and LCP bonds with IP hashing for ESXi hosts, one or more isolated VLANs associated, uh, allocated to VM kernel NFS interfaces um, and, and NFS filters, multiple NFS data stores to improve load balancing. The second most common uh, form of network storage uh, used with vSphere is hyperconverged storage. Hyperconverged storage solutions leverage the flash and spindle-based storage on ESXi hosts to create a clustered storage solution. Each hyperconverged storage solution comes with its own set of networking best practices. For example, VMware Virtual SAN requires that all systems be connected as part of the same subnet layer two domain and leverage IGMP for system operations. 
On the switches running Cumulus Linux that pass virtual SAN traffic, it is necessary to enable IGMP snooping on the virtual SAN VLAN and configure an IGMP querier with, within the fabric for optimal performance. Typical convert storage deployments leverage a common set of configurations. Jumbo frames, um, again, as mentioned, before, as mentioned before, 9K IP MTU and 10 gig licks and LACP bonds with IP hashing for ESXi hosts. The third most common form of network storage used with vSphere is iSCSI SAN. iSCSI storage network uh, designs typically use dedicated physical NICs, VM, VM kernel interfaces, and switch ports for storage traffic. In some cases, dedicated switches for the iSCSI SAN are deployed. Alternative, alternatively, some deployments use NICs and network fabric that share bandwidth for storage, management, and VM traffic. Also here listed is uh, the typical iSCSI storage deployments uh, common set of configuration, which again is jumbo frames, 10 gig links. Um, if you'd like any further information on configuring vSphere with iSCSI, please refer to VMware's technical paper as listed here on the slide. Of course, one of the main buzzwords is how can I scale? Initially, you can expand by adding additional switches until the limitation of the spine switches is reached. Please keep in mind the oversubscription factor, which might lead to adding another independent pair of spine switches with access leaf switches, which is essentially a whole new network pod with connectivity over layer three, for example. Remember, additional spine switches will be added in pair to implement CLAC. Another concept to keep in mind is external connectivity. One, there's, uh, there's two of them. One, at layer two, with routing and gateway services provided outside the cluster or by NSX or vSphere. The second is at layer three, with routing services provided by the spine switches. For more information on building a data center with VMware, vSphere, and Cumulus Linux, or op operational management consideration, configuring VDS, uh, we have a Cumulus Linux validated design guide for VMware vSphere. Um, the link is here as well, um, and you, if you just do a Google search on it as well, you'll be able to find it, no problem. So let's move on to other exciting things as well, which is ONI. ONI stands for Open Network Install Environment. Previously, you couldn't load any operating system on a switch. Hardware that comes with ONI allows you just to do that. This also can be completely a different topic, but it can be thought of as uh, an enhanced version of Pixie. We're also, proud to say, we're also proud to say that one of our engineers at Cumulus was the lead and started this project, which eventually got pushed upstream to the community and for other operating systems to use as well. We'll explain discovery, waterfalls, et cetera, on the next slides. Again, we're not going to cover ONI in great depth. The documentation offers sample configurations, and if you already have a Pixie environment set up, you're already compatible. Three waterfalls occur within ONI. Its entire focus is on these three loops, discovery, file transfer, and execution. The first of these loops is to get on the network. This begins on the management Ethernet port, starting with the most modern protocols and ending with a well-known IPv4 address. The second step is to use a file transfer protocol to fetch the operating system installation image. HTTP is very powerful here, as request headers are sent to the web server, including serial number, MAC address, and other ident identifying information. Once an, image is, is, once an image is fetched, it's saved and executed on the switch. Here's a picture of ONI booting up installer mode. We can see a number of interesting things here. ONI has been, has been leased an IPv4 uh, address by DHCP, Telnet D and SS, SSH daemon have started, and ONI is running in installer mode, um, i.e. image discovery. Here we can see the HTTP and TFTP waterfall in progress. ONI gets the operating system on the switch. ONI will lead us into the next major subjects of this webinar, which is zero-touch provisioning. Zero-touch provisioning and ONI are the start for automation, but we'll take it step by step. Zero-touch provisioning allows de device, devices to be quickly deployed in small or large-scale environments. ZDP picks up where ONI left off, and, but let's go in some detail on how ZTP works.
There are two ways to use ZTP. One is via DHCP and the second is via USB. The, the script executes as root and does not, does not execute until it sees the cumulus auto-provisioning flag. The flag is necessary. Like, let's say, for example, you're downloading a home page by error or anything from the web server um, by accident. ZTP downloads the file and looks for that flag to know that it's an auto-provisioning script. The first option here is with the USB, uh, the USB stick. It's going from most specific to least specific. This is the second option if installing many switches via DHCP. During the DHCP process over ETH0, Cumulus Linux will request DHCP option 239. This option is used to specify the custom provisioning script. For example, the dhcpd.com file um, for DHCP server could look to what's shown here. Also, the hostname of the switch can be specified via the hostname option. The zero-touch provisioning process involved these steps. Number one, the first, the first time you boot Cumulus Linux, ETH0 is configured for DHCP and makes a DHCP request. The DHCP server offers, offers a lease to the switch. If option 239 is present in the, in the response, the, zero the ZTP process itself will start. The ZTP process requests the contents of the script from the URL sending additional HTTP header, uh, headers containing details about the switch. The script's contents are parsed to ensure it contains the cumulus auto-provisioning flag, um, which if it is present, then the script executes locally on the switch. Um, the return code of the script gets examined. If it is zero, then the provisioning state is marked as complete. Auto-provisioning changes this file um, as the, uh, the location is provided here on the slide um, so that you don't reprovision every time you reboot or, e or ETH0 um, sends a DHCP request. So what are the, um, to summarize, some of the best practices, treat, your, uh, treat the switches like your servers, no need to use custom tools, um, partner with your server system administrators, use what they are using, and you can also unify the monitoring, use server tools and existing monitoring systems, no need to reinvent the wheel here. Um, again, it's Linux, it's not Cumulus-like, it's not Linux-like. So the last concept before we go into the demo is to go over automation. And um, again, we're trying to build the small blocks to from vSphere, Cumulus Linux, Oni, ZTP, automation to bring everything all together. So the whole thing for automation is a different, it's a different approach than traditional uh, configuration where the configuration management tool should be the source of truth. Also one of the things that we would like to emphasize, we'd like to provide an example to show how easy it would be if the switch needs replacing. You, you remove the old device, you update the MAC address as shown on here on the right hand side, um, clear any old certificates using like Puppet or Chef, install the new device, only install Cumulus Linux, ZTP Bootstrap's automation tool, and the switch is back in service. Here are some examples of the automation tools um, that are provided. I mean, it's not from Cumulus Linux, but it's used by uh, many vendors um, or uh, many network administrators. It's Ansible, Puppet, Chef, um, also, the other two is SALT or CF Engine. So to bring it back is here's one way of doing a ZTP with Ansible. Um, of course, the, the, the syntax will change, um, but this is one example with Ansible. Um, the next slide will show this is a different example with Puppet. Um, again, all of this is, purpose is, doing, is having the same purpose. And the last one is ZTP example with Chef. Um, it's just different way of writing code, of course, but they all do the same thing. Now let's try to bring everything that we have talked about together and show, uh, and show it working to bring it home. So I hope that everyone can see um, the workbench uh, right now. So um, 
we're going to use uh, CWMUX. So previously, we've installed the um, CL demo package, which installs the Puppet master server, downloads all the configuration and ESX install files onto this jump host. What we're going to do now is install uh, ESXi 5.5 onto the two bare metal servers using Pixie and configure the bare metal switches using a very similar process. In this case, um, ZTP. If you'd like to see like the topology, we can go here, um, and this is this is the topology right here where we have, um, let me maximize this. Uh, where we have two spine switches, um, two leaves, and two servers. So this is um, the typical setup of a two by two by two in a Cumulus Workbench to demonstrate um, several demos, but um, since we're interested here on, on VM, uh, VMware vSphere, there's also a, a, a demo that's provided on our website that you can refer to. So we'll just be running through that to bring everything together. So as you can see here, there's nothing, um, there's nothing, uh, it's just a console. It's a bare metal server. There's nothing that's on there. Um, also, let's go to the switches. Um, Okay, um, so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to do the CW um, PXE helper to install the ESXi. Okay. And then we're going to do repeat the same on two. Okay. What this will do is um, basically at this point we're we're installing um, we're installing uh, ESXi 5.5 on the uh, on the servers, uh, one of the things is we're gonna we're, we're let's go ahead and, and do the uh, the same on the switches, which is similar process to Pixie on the servers. As you can see, um, ESXi is just being installed. I mean, it, it's kind of uh, uh, it, it's doing its process, so we'll give it a, a couple minutes. Uh, what we can do here is we can start with uh, resetting the switches. So what this will do is we're going to, uh, this reboots the switch. It, it, it's running through the ZTP um, since Cumulus is already preloaded. This will get the first wave of configuration, download the Puppet agent, download the Puppet manifest, and execute, uh, and execute the Puppet manifest. Um, one of the things that we wanted to, to have is, um, although like, for, for instance, if we go to the installation um, right here to the servers, um, this takes about 20 to 25 minutes. So what we have done is um, we already have another, um, as you can see on the screen, it's installing VMware ESXi 5.5. Um, and on the switches, um, it's rebooting and it's running, it's running the scripts. Um, while this, uh, this process usually takes about, uh, as mentioned, 15, 20 minutes, so we already had another workbench that's kind of uh, pre-configured. Since the process um, takes a bit, and we don't want to keep you for that long, um, we have installed VCSA um, and used VPN and added ESXi host. 
Um, this, um, so this was Workbench 413. Let's jump ahead to um, Workbench uh, 418, uh, which was ready. Um, let's go ahead and close this one. So one of the things here that the uh, script has done is to um, in install configurations on the switches. For example, um, let's go to uh, let's go to L uh, LDP, um, or let's go to the network interfaces first. I'm um, in case if you're not familiar with uh, CW Mux, we have um, spine one on the top left corner. Spine 2 on the right-hand corner, uh, top right-hand corner, and leaf 1 and leaf 2 on the bottom left and bottom right. Um, one of the things here is, let's say, um, like uh, the network interfaces. I can type correctly. <laughs> um, and then uh, another way I can do this is SSH. One, that would be easier. So this this was not configured uh, by by me uh, like going into each switch and doing it. This was actually all done via automation, and you can see that um, this is uh, this was oh, this was pushed via Puppet um, to uh, have the uplinks, the the bonds um, to both uh, the spines, the server um, uh, C lag is also configured and everything um, is already pretty much done, uh, which can be run on multiple workbenches. It's all the same. Every time that you load a workbench and you want to run through this, it's, it's the same idea. Um, so let's go to also one of the things is um, IP link show, um, where you can see these are all the, uh, the switch ports. Um, the other thing that we would like to do is now let's. This is all interesting in the sense of, um, in the sense of, uh, from the switches we can do LLD, uh, LLDP. So um, where we can see here, uh, we see server two lab, uh, server two lab local. We have VMware ESX uh, configured already. Uh, we have the VM NIC three. Uh, which is right here as well. So, and then the rest of um, uh, the rest of the topology that is configured between um, e uh, all the force uh, switches and host. Um, we can also switch to uh, our the other one, which is the uh, actually going to the uh, hypervisor, and we can go here. And what we can see here is, um, let's close that. And we have configured, um, what we can do is let's go to vCenter and then um, data center. So we can go to Go to the center again. Local host. So we have the um, what we have here is we have the host. We have server one lab local and server two lab local. Um, what I'd like to see is the vCenter home, of course, go. Um, okay, and then let's go to server one. And then let's go to
a manage. And then let's go to networking. And then let's go to here where we can see um, the information for LLDP um, on the on the on the VM. So uh, one of the things, like for example, port description is SWP thirty two S one, um, which was compared to what we saw before on the LLDP on the switches themselves. So we can play around with here um, and. Uh, for example, we can go on VM NIC 3, and we can see also here is the same uh, the same scenario SWP 32S0. Of course, all depends on, um, and this is running on select uh, Celestica D4040, um, and this is the system name is um, Leaf One. So this this was um, a, a demo just to show like how things interact all together. Um, in terms of everything is um, uh, everything is automated. Um, uh, of course, once everything is configured via uh, any automation tool, Puppet or Chef, um, it's fairly easy to uh, go through and replicate it um, without having to do any manual uh, configuration, extensive manual configuration. So let's go back to um, our slides. So um, what we have done here is we have implemented the VMware vSphere design guide in the Cumulus Workbench. Um, they include CLAG, uh, zero touch provisioning, and also uh, uh, PTM, but you can, uh, uh, which is prescriptive topology manager. You can find more details on the website. The source code for this is um, on GitHub if you'd like to see it. Um, also, this was um, again. Um, this was the network topology that we just uh, went through, um, and this is just to explain, like the two spine, the two leaves, and the servers. Of course, uh, each topology, uh, each topology can be different. Um, so, to summarize, what we have talked about is the vSphere um, and its role in the data center in terms of virtualization, compute, network, and um, and everything else that vSphere brings. Uh, we talked about open networking, which is uh, basically it's a very different approach um, than uh, the traditional locked-in vendor, locked-in uh, software, uh, locked-in hardware from a single vendor. And we we demonstrated that vSphere with Cumulus Linux is um, is it's not a problem. It's just like any um, it's not a problem to use any Cumulus switch, uh, any any switch running Cumulus Linux as the underlay. Um, and we also talked about Oni, uh, which is now it's like the switches once they um, once they ship with Oni, you can install any operating system, not necessarily Cumulus, but of course we we're promoting Cumulus here, um, and uh, ZTP and automation. And we ended up with um, a demo just to show how um, everything uh, works together. Um, and so if you're interested, and if you don't if you don't believe anything, like if you'd like to see everything for yourself. Uh, you can request to reserve a workbench today. Um, here's the link also as well, or if, in case, as uh, Doug has previously mentioned, you can send info at cumulusnetworks.com. Um, and this is um, also one of the funny pictures that we have from uh, our DevOps team, um, Automate Everything. Um, so that was that was the presentation that I had um, so far. But uh, now it's like uh, we're open for uh, the, uh, uh, the Q&A session. Before we hand it, before I hand it over to uh, uh, to Doug, um, um, here's a list of references that I wanted to uh, to show, um, and now we're open for um, Q and A. Great, thank you, Ahmed. So at, at this point, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to ask them in in the chat window, or I believe we can open up the mics if people want to ask questions directly as well. Um, so we had one that came up, and so the question was was pretty uh, nebulous, and it said, "Is this SDN then?" Um, so I'll I'll go ahead and answer that and say, um, you know, Cumulus isn't really an SDN kind of quote unquote play, if you will. Um, we we provide traditional data center switching and routing functions um, that you basically expect from any networking vendor, uh, you know, be it Cisco, Arista, Juniper, whoever, you know, anyone that's providing an uh, an underlay network would generally provide those kind of functions. Um, so generally SDN usually refers to open flow or open overlay networks. Um, on the overlay camp it's usually NSX or open contrail, nuage, those kind of things. Um, 
And so that kind of flows nicely into the second question we got, which is you say mention, mention NSX, like how do we work with NSX? Um, well, NSX obviously still needs a physical network to operate. Um, so, and that network is usually referred to as the underlay network. Um, generally speaking, NSX uh, runs completely transparently to the underlay network. Um, everything's encapsulated. Um, so what that allows is that for the, the majority of the, the network, uh, kind of tenant network complexity is, is carried by the underlay, or sorry, by the overlay rather, and the underlay can be dramatically simplified, templated, and then automated. Um, and that's where Cumulus really shines, is that by abstracting all of that complexity away into the, uh, into the overlay network, um, you know, Cumulus is, provides a really automated and, and cost-effective underlay fabric. Um, so I uh, also had a question of, yeah, is, are the slides going to be made available? And yes, they will be made available. So does anyone, anyone else have any, any questions? Or um, we'll give it a couple of minutes. You know, thank you for thank you for joining us. Um, you know, we'll, we'll wrap it up now. Um, thank you everyone for your participation. Um, we hope you found this uh, hope you found this um, interesting. Um, please tune in to our next webinar on May 20 uh, for Invisible L2 Redundancy with Scott Emery. Uh, details on our website, which is cumulusnetworks.com/webinar. Okay. Thanks for your time, everyone, and uh, we'll we'll wrap it up now.